Thanks everyone for being here tonight. Uh, this is the sixth of our public engagement conversations for the first round of the Aquatic Capital Improvement Plan. And tonight we're gonna to talk about Tuttle Pool and Linden Spray Park. Um, in case you need to leave early, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, after the meeting tonight, we'll, we'll post the full presentation on our website at columbusaquatics.org. And then in a few days, we'll have the recorded presentation from tonight and notes from the meeting uh, posted there as well. And then finally, um, if you want to receive emails about the project, uh, please go to the link uh, that you see there on your screen. Sana's gonna put it in the chat that you can click. Um, if you go there and sign up and click on the Aquatic Capital Improvement Plan update, you'll receive all the emails about the project. So as far as Zoom, um, please stay on mute if you're not talking. You're all muted when you joined. Um, we'll all have a chance to talk later. Uh, you can use the chat feature to ask questions and provide feedback, and we'll be, we'll be watching that throughout the presentation tonight. We'll have a few poll questions that'll pop up, um, and you can just answer them as they appear. And then if you selected a breakout room when you registered tonight, uh, you'll be placed in there automatically when we get to that portion of the evening. Um, so thanks. Uh, let's have our first poll so we can see how they work. Um, how many people are on this Zoom call tonight? We know that some people join with their families, uh, with their kids, with their spouses, and so we want to know how many people we're talking to tonight. Give you another few seconds. All right. Looks like most of you are here just by yourself and a few of you uh, have someone with you. So that's how the polls will work tonight. Uh, we'll have a few more later on. I appreciate your participation. So tonight uh, we're gonna talk through the current aquatics programming in the city of Columbus. We'll introduce you to the process that we're currently going through with the Aquatics Capital Improvement Plan. We'll talk a little bit about the findings that we've uh, discovered to date. And then we'll break into our breakout rooms with a few questions to lead the discussion. And then we'll come back together for some final thoughts. So here's the staff that's been working on this behind the scenes uh, for the past few months. Uh, we're a group of architects, rec and park experts, and also staff from Columbus Recreation and Parks. So the city of Columbus has 16 aquatic facilities currently. Uh, the 16th and the newest is Linden Spray Park, which we'll talk about tonight. Um, as you can see where they're located throughout the city, uh, we have one indoor aquatic facility with the Aquatic Center. We have four spray parks, three fountains in the downtown area, and then we have eight pools. So tonight we're gonna to talk about Linden and Tuttle on the north side. You may be wondering, uh, why are we doing this? And so uh, Columbus Recreation and Parks recognizes that the aquatic facilities uh, need improvements to better serve the residents. Um, and to make sure that it meets the needs of these communities, uh, this, we're developing this long-term capital improvement plan. And so we're going to these public meetings and we'll be back in a few months with some more public meetings. Um, and we're looking at implementing items of this immediately. Uh, and we're, currently we're looking at Glenwood and Windsor pools and getting those updated. And so along with that, um, Columbus undertook a entire rec and parks master plan in 2014. Um, and there were some deficiencies noted. And so um, part of the, the history behind this is that we are looking to upgrade and expand the aquatic facilities and programs in the city of Columbus with a focus on health and wellness. Uh, the city is also looking to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion to increase access to parks and aquatic facilities, promoting safety and security. And they're also looking at uh, how to create a sustainable operating revenue generation. So one of the first steps is to get feedback from you on what you need and what changes you'd like to see implemented. And your feedback is absolutely vital to this process. And we appreciate you being here because you being here is gonna help shape the final plan. The process that we're going through is a five-step process. And currently we're at step one. 
we're still gathering information and we're still looking to hear from you and what you need and want. Um, and so after these round of engagement meetings is over, uh, we're gonna go back and take all the information that we've gathered, uh, refine it, and then come back to you in the fall with some concept ideas uh, for each of the sites uh, in late summer, or early fall, and we'll look for more input at that time. So part of this gather phase, uh, we visited all the sites We've looked at existing studies, existing drawings, we've analyzed the sites, and we're looking at uh, aquatic utilization, scheduling, capacity, and we're looking at demographics and projected growth patterns. Uh, and so the blue box there is what we're looking for tonight. We are uh, assessing the adequacy of the facility by hearing from you. Uh, we're surveying you on your perception of the existing facilities. And we're also observing um, how you all engage with the existing environments of the facilities. Part of what we're doing in this gather phase is looking at the demographics of each of the sites. And so we've set a two mile radius around each of the facilities. And so first up, we have Tuttle Pool. Uh, the median age for the users of Tuttle Pool is just over 24 years old. Average household size is just over two. And you can see there, uh, Tuttle Pool serves over 96,000 people in that two mile radius. And part of our demographic analysis is also looking at the age distribution of the folks that are using their facilities. Um, and what we really like to break out is the youth age distribution, because that really helps us uh, decide what amenities are best, because each age group uh, leans more towards different aquatic amenities. And so when we look at the under 17 age group, uh, that's what you see in the bar charts on the left there. Um, and so as you can see, ages less than three has the most, um, and then it, it falls down until you get to 15 and 17 when it starts to go back up again. And you can see there that 80% of the population for Tuttle Pool falls in that 18 to 49 age range. We did the same for Linden Spray Park. Uh, the median age there is 40 and a half, and the average household size is slightly larger, just over two and a half. And that serves uh, over 76,000 people. When we look at the age distribution there, you can see 68% falls in that adult range of 18 to 49. Um, and when we look at the under 17, you see there the highest again is age less than three, and then it slowly goes down as you get closer to uh, 15 and 17. We have another poll question for you. Uh, how many times do you visit your pool or spray park on average per summer? You have a few options there, once a month, a few times a month, once a week, a few times a week, every day, or we have not visited the pool. All right, just a few seconds. Okay, so it looks like a few times a month or a few times a week uh, were the highest scoring. Um, a few folks visit every day, that's awesome. Um, and then once a week and once a month were also selected. We've had a survey out through SurveyMonkey um, for the past couple of months, and I'm hoping that everyone here has taken it. Um, if they haven't, please go to our website at columbusaquatics.org and take that survey. Uh, but I'm assuming since you're here, you've been involved and you've taken that survey. And so we've been looking at the responses to that um, on a weekly basis to see what people are saying. And so we've pulled out a few of those questions uh, that we think can give us some good information as we're moving forward in designing these facilities. And so the first question we wanted to look at was, uh, how long do you travel to use the aquatic facility you use most? And you could see there that 91% of people travel 20 minutes or less to visit their facilities with the majority falling between five and 20 minutes. We also asked uh, what kind of pool user you are. And you can see there, uh, the largest proportion of people were using the pools for recreational swim or fun. And we had uh, the next highest was for children's use of recreational swim or fun, followed by lap swimming and swimming lessons. 
the city of Columbus believes that swimming is a vital life skill. And so we were wondering what you think the three most significant community benefits are to public swimming and aquatics. And from there, uh, you can see the number one response was swimming lessons to develop swimming as a life skill, followed by year round exercise and healthy lifestyle and a place to cool off during hot summer months. Uh, also ranking pretty high was enjoyment and quality time with family. So this graph I know is a little crazy. Um, the orange and the light blue are what we're looking at here. Uh, those are the supportive, most supportive, likely supportive. And so the question here was, um, these were all choices that the city is considering to improve aquatic facilities or services. Um, and so as you can see, the ones with the most support were increasing the swim season, upgrading pool houses and bath houses, um, more seating areas, adding lockers, interactive family-friendly play features, warm water for showers, and zero depth pool entry. So there's a lot of support here for a lot of different items. Um, and then finally, we asked an open-ended question of what amenities you would use at a site maybe that weren't indicated elsewhere. And so the larger the font here, the more responses those, uh, those items had. And so you could see hot tub, showers, pool, uh, snack bar, sauna, uh, lap swimming, lap lanes. So there's a lot of good responses there. Uh, now we're going to look at some different amenities and programs that we're considering offering at each of the sites. And we've divided those into four different categories of adventure, sports, fitness, and programs. But first, we want to know what programs uh, do you currently use? So we'll have another poll. You can see their swim team or stroke clinic, dive clinic, swim lessons, water aerobics, therapeutic recreational water fitness, open lap swim, recreational open swim, master swim, rental capabilities, and lifeguarding or water safety instructor classes. And you can pick three. Give you another few seconds. Okay. Well, it looks like almost everybody here uses the recreational open swim. Uh, open lap swim was the next highest. And then we had swim team or stroke clinic, swim lessons, master swim, lifeguarding, a little bit of everything. That's great to see. Uh, the first of the aquatic trends that we were looking at uh, were sports. And so uh, under sports, you have things like water volleyball, water handball or water polo, water basketball. Um, and in the lower left, there's a uh, obstacle course type inflatable called Wibbit. Uh, those can be moved from site to site. We also looked at trends in aquatic fitness, and that included things like aqua cycling, a separate lap pool, water aerobics, or aqua yoga balance programs. We looked at different programming to offer, such as health and wellness or fitness classes, uh, things like dive in movement or log rolling. And then when we looked at the spray parks, I understand Linden's brand new, uh, but we want to get your feedback on that as well. Um, when we look at spray park trends, um, we look at different features. And so for the spray parks, there's features such as inclusive play or universal design, which would be accessible to children of all abilities. Uh, there's things like play structures, uh, dumping buckets, which fill with water and then fall. And the possibility of incorporating natural elements with or without water features. We're also considering uh, items like spray funnels or ground sprays. There's inward sprays and rain showers. 
Um, and then finally, for spray parks or for pools, uh, we looked at different options of seating structure, or I'm sorry, shaded structures or seating areas. And those include some natural elements, um, some canopies, um, benches, and that sort of thing. So considering everything that was shown before, uh, what programming would you like to see offered at Tuttle Pool? We'll have another poll. So this again is multiple choice. We have early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim hours, swim lessons for all ages, water aerobics, health and wellness, water sports, wibbits, dive-in movies, paddleboard yoga, aqua bikes, and scuba lessons. You may need to scroll to see all the options there. Give another couple seconds. All right. Top response there was swim lessons for all ages. Uh, lots of responses for early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim, dive-in movies, uh, water aerobics, health and wellness uh, ranked pretty highly as well. Uh, next, another poll for you. What amenities would you like to see offered at Tuttle Pool? You may need to scroll again. Oh, whoops, this is Linden Spray Park option. So let's go with that one. What amenities would you like to see offered at Linden? And I realize that most of the people here are for Tuttle, uh, but if you have, um, oh, Becky stopped me. Let's move to the next one. There we go. What amenities would you like to see offered at Tuttle Pool? And so we're looking at a separate lap pool, a heated pool, baby pool, diving well, tube slides, water slides, zero entry children's area, play structure, fountains, or Wibbit's course. Give everyone a few more seconds. And I see you're asking about only picking one. Um, we will cover this in the, in the breakout room when we all have a chance to speak. And so we do wanna hear all of your thoughts about that. So it looks like the number one choice there was water slides uh, with a second place for a zero entry children's area and a separate lap pool uh, and a little bit of voting for just about everything else, baby pool diving well, play structure and fountains. All right, now we'll ask if, what you'd like to see offered at Linden Spray Park. And so this one, you can select more than one. Um, so when you're thinking of those spray park features that we showed before, there's inclusive play or universal design elements. There's the play structure. There's dumping buckets, spray funnels, rain showers, inward sprays, ground sprays, natural elements, shaded structures, and seating. if you can vote now. Give you another couple seconds.
All right. So everyone wants shade, which is great. And then a few votes for just about everything else. Inclusive play was up there, natural elements is up there, seating, rain showers, and dumping buckets. And then finally, um, how do you believe that Columbus Recreation and Parks should financially support these new amenities and programming? Um, and there's some options that pop up there when you're looking at them. Just keep in mind uh, for the 12 other municipalities in Franklin County with public pools, uh, the average for daily uh, adult admission is $10.10 and the average for children is just under $9 a day. And so there's some options there on entry price, uh, providing partnership opportunities for businesses, uh, providing fundraising opportunities for schools, church groups, sports team, et cetera. There's an option for additional membership opportunities. Um, you can pick uh, multiple there. Give you another few seconds. All right. Uh, it looks like entry price for children 17 and under $1 and adults two to $5 ranks the highest. Uh, annual pool pass for 40 for an individual and 100 for a family was in second place. Oh, there's a tie for first. Uh, partnership opportunities for business was also up there. And then some uh, selected fundraising opportunities for uh, schools, church groups, and sports teams, uh, and also additional membership opportunities. Uh, so now's the time we'll split into our breakout rooms, uh, but I believe everyone here is for Tuttle Pool. Um, is that uh, true? Does it, uh, pop in the chat if you're here for Linden and we'll make sure we can get the breakout rooms going. Um, otherwise, I think we can all just stay in this room and have a conversation. All right, uh, I think we're good to just stay here. Um, and Kathleen Vaughn, thanks for your comment about Linden, about joining the Linden combo. Oh, there are some people here for Linden, okay. So Becky, let's, um, let's go ahead and do the breakout room. And if Linden wraps up early, um, they can join the Tuttle conversation. So when we're looking at the breakout room, um, we have a few questions, a few talking points that we wanted to hear from you on, uh, but we're also open to having a general conversation as well. So we're uh, particularly looking at what improvements you'd like to see, uh, what aquatic activities or classes you'd like to see, what aquatic amenities you'd like to see, uh, your thoughts on the safety and security at the site. Um, and then finally, with these improvements, uh, with these potential improvements, would you be willing to pay higher fees for upgraded pools? So you'll automatically be placed uh, in your breakout room, the, the one you selected at registration. And if you didn't select the room, uh, we'll put you in the uh, Linden Spray Park room probably, because we only have a few folks here for that. Uh, once you're in there, uh, please select a reporter who's gonna report back to the larger group at the end. And then when the breakout section is over, you can just click leave breakout room. Don't click leave meeting and you'll be uh, returned to the general meeting. So we should all be getting sent to our room shortly.
hey Tom, hey Tom, did you want to go into Linden or Tuttle? And let me actually um, unmute you. Okay, you should be able to unmute yourself now. I can go either one. Okay. Um, I'm going to move you over to Linden. It, it may end early, in which case you're welcome to go over to the other room. Okay. All right. Thanks. the amenities but I, th I think the one question we didn't get to and Kathleen kind of touched on it from her childhood experience is safety and security right those kids in her neighborhood that like her that were coming to Tuttle because they didn't maybe feel that Windsor was a safe place to be so I think we do need to have a conversation you know I don't know that it's ever been a huge issue at Tuttle I know from experience there have been some isolated incidents but certainly not what has been at some of the other city pools. So, I mean, how do we handle security and how do we deal with that without going down the rabbit hole of adding, you know, police officers because that becomes problematic um, without adding social workers or because that gets then expensive. Um, I think this question probably takes us back to partnerships with the school system, with social service agencies, uh, with other partners in the community. So I would just be curious from the perspective of some other folks like Kathleen who were coming from other neighborhoods to utilize Tuttle, what their thoughts are on that. I mean, I think we went to Tuttle and Reggie is now on the call too, another um, former Linden resident, but like we all went to Tuttle grew up at the swim going to Noel's point we as before we were lifeguards before we were management we would spend that eight hours at the pool as swim team lessons Barnes you did it Miller you did it Shaw you did it um, because it was so safe and it felt so safe and yes they did add police presence in rotating and I know that at, when I was in management oftentimes police would just come and sit outside. And then if they, if we needed anything, we could connect with them. Um, but that relationship was crucial. Now, I think it's more about um, the relationship piece than anything for our, for our communities to feel safe. I know that, I know for a fact that Linden Spray Park gets, um, sees more uh, patrons than Windsor. And Windsor is, closer to like street access like it's a little bit more challenging to to get into linden um into like linden rec center and this and the um splash pad and so forth but the attraction the newness of it makes people want to be there i think i love that what you were saying barnes about community partnerships that people want so like um where i work nationwide comes and they say, hey, we have this thing. If you're interested, let us know. Or I, you know, we, we connect with parents, we connect parents with resources. Like it's, it's more about providing resources for the community at a place that they love to be at versus, and that provides a, a sense of security versus what we're talking about, policing a pool where people are just having, mostly always having a good time. And Miller, I think is, crucial to this conversation in terms of he has been there the longest. And even with, even when we had challenging moments with patrons, he's, he maintained relationships with those patrons. Very few times did those patrons come back and say, I'm not messing with you, Miller. You know, I'm never coming back here. Da, 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 da. They'd go through whatever they needed to go through. They'd be gone. He'd say, see you in two weeks. And they'd be back and say, I think my time's up. I'm ready to come back swimming. So it really, really is about the relationships in terms of safety. I would just like to see that at all of our pools and not just what Miller built at Tuttle. 
So, and this goes, thank you. This goes back to an HR question, right? So I forget who I was having this conversation with, but this idea of more indoor pools, the other thing that gives you is a much larger year round professional aquatic staff staffing those pools that you can then draw on for those summer months when the demand is up at the outdoor pools. So, I mean, I think there's, there's added benefit other than just having the facilities that are available year round to the professionalism and capacity to deliver programming of our entire program. That's going to come with those additional out, additional indoor year round professional staffs at those facilities. And just and, to throw it out there, if, I mean, and if you ahead. want to teach some people how to how to swim, just doing it a few weeks a year, I don't I mean, that's not necessarily the best way to give lifelong swimming skills or health benefits. The, I don't I, I don't have the stats on it, but my daughters did the indoor on Saturdays and, and it's not free like the summer swim lessons, but it's excellent instruction and um, it was really pretty pretty busy and diverse group of families. Um, during the indoor season, it, it also offers the like uh, caregiver child. So it goes down to infant ages too. And it's really fun to watch. <laughs> the babies are so cute. Um, you know, just getting used to the water splashing on their face and jumping in the water and so on. So um, lessons are still, you know, offered, but there's, there's that fee. And so that may discourage some. Yeah, my, my daughter also has done um, the indoor swim lessons um, with a fee. Although, like I said, I think it's um, free if you um, don't have funds. I think the Columbus Parks and Recs programming um, is, is actually for those without uh, capabilities, it's, it's free. But um, for those with the ability to pay, I think it- Play grant, it just takes it down to like $20 or, I, I don't know, it depends. I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I've been told by, by family members that it was completely free for them, but, um, not hundred percent sure what and how they did that. Um, but, but anyway, my, um, I, I've had my daughter in the indoor, um, swim lessons. Um, and, um, and she, she did that at the age of three. Um, and it's a good, it's a good option. Well, thanks everybody. Let's um, have our reports from our breakout rooms. Um, Trisha was our reporter in the Tuttle room. Uh, would you mind sharing what we talked about? Sure, thanks. Um, to start with, um, it was brought up that uh, it's not appropriate to compare as far as cost structure, um, compare um, Columbus, Columbus Park and Rec um, pools with our neighboring suburbs, but maybe comparing to Cleveland, um, the other big eight um, urban areas. Um, somebody looked up that Cleveland, theirs is more on an age base. So 17 and under is $2 admission, for example. Um, so looking at, um, you know, understanding that is likely that we'll have to operate pools um, at a loss like we have been, um, but that there's a, a positive attitude from um, taxpayers that they're willing to pay because it's a safety um, concern. And again, it's health and wellness for um, our broader um, community. Um, and that's especially, you know, true here at Tuttle, which is, um, uh, yeah, providing swim services for much of the north side of Columbus. Um, so that idea of wanting to keep the cost close to $1, looking at corporate sponsors, um, if possible. Um, the annual membership is more of a, maybe seen more as, as a convenience, but that maybe that shouldn't be the only option for having a discounted admission. Um, maybe even offering um, a membership just for the summer. So somebody might want to just have a summer, mem summer membership, the way the pool membership is right now, or was in the past, of course, it's free, you know, the summer, but in the past, it's for the whole year. So it's used for indoor, but there might be some folks who just, you know, I really just want it for the summer, maybe they could do a pool membership just for summertime. Um, so looking also at collaborating with the school district um, in pool facilities, um, having, again, pay options based on age, um, income, or even their ability to 
ability to pay or having sponsorships um, for some people. Um, so, and I think that was um, part of the goal. I think part of the mission of the whole um, Columbus Recreation and Parks is um, to provide um, these services in an equitable way. So making sure that we're really studying um, how we can do that. Um, understanding that the pools are uh, something that needs to be invested in to really bring families back. Um, so that's really important. Um, needing to look at in general, subsidizing the pools. Um, as far as what improvements we wanna see, um, we need better bathrooms. Um, and that's from the kids too. <laughs> so my 11 year old, I asked her, what do you wanna see? And first thing she said, better bathrooms. Um, but also diving well, slides, shade would be really important. So that idea of really, we need more pools. Um, we need more outdoor pools, but also we need more indoor pools because then you don't have to worry about um, sunscreen, which can, you know, is chemicals. You don't have to worry about, you know, the, the damage of the sun. Um, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, weather concerns and so on. So indoor pools, more indoor pools would be um, optional or would be would be helpful. Um, so then also the idea of expanding the pools, having more pools, um, because uh, people are, are definitely, again, um, we have many people even on this call that are outside of the two mile radius that was part of the statistics presented. Um, so expanding the pool itself and having additional pools. Um, adding parking, that can be a real concern. I, I've known many friends who have been towed and there's no more difficult, you know, uh, situation to deal with and you're tired from being in the sun and you come out to find your car is gone um, and you've got kids in tow who are hungry and um, that's a big concern. Um, but also just having um, more, more pool space. Um, so also mentioned as far as um, activities and classes, so there's a definite demand on services that goes back again to having more pools. Um, people have, when it, when it was in person, people would line up um, hour plus in advance to try to get into the swimming lessons. Um, and in addition to that, making sure that there are lesson options in the evening too, that's not offered this year. Um, it has been at certain pool, at, at, at Tuttle in the past, there have been, um, I think just one evening option, but maybe looking at expanding that um, understanding that that can be a demand on lifeguard, um, having instructors available. Uh, let's see, sorry, there's so much here. Um, uh, so there was a parent who mentioned really liking that there were, there's the, the zero depth or um, the areas that aren't very deep. Um, it also is mentioned by Noel that that's helpful to um, having like the one foot area, um, uh, like two to three feet area, like it's really broken up well for the the lesson, um, the swim lesson levels. Um, so having the varied depths and having it well marked is also helpful for recreational, keeping kids safe, especially if they're there with a large group like camps, which often happens at Tuttle as well. Um, it also is mentioned that OSU is not offering swim lessons right now. They also aren't offering their swim team. And so that puts a little bit more demand um, at Tuttle. Um, there was a mention about, uh, let's see, yeah, the demographics that we definitely represent um, people outside of the two mile radius, um, having lessons in the evening. Um, some lifeguards have been, you know, they work from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, so that is, there's demands on the space um, of the pool, um, being able to have maybe recreational time and swim lessons at the same time, but also it's a demand on um, having the staff and, and lifeguards available to do that as well. I think too, um, mentioning, you know, again, having that focus on health and wellness, um, even though Tuttle is right Tuttle Pool is right next door to Tuttle Community Center. Tuttle Community Center doesn't have a fitness room. Um, so for, you know, the adult or family members who are waiting for either swim team or swim lessons, um, there's no other way for them to, they can walk maybe on, you know, on the bike trail, um, but just maybe even having some hand weights or something available for them to do fitness right in the area would be really great. Um, 
I'm enjoying the Linden Community Center while my girls have um, some team practice, but it would be great to have something right there. Um, just to, again, encourage health and wellness for everybody who just comes in the gate. Thank you, Trisha. Um, Asmara, do you have a recap for Linden for us? Um, let's see. I wasn't the recorder. Um, <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, but let's see. Um, that particular facility, the Linden facility, it's a spray park. So, I mean, there's not really classes that I was looking to see have at that particular location. Um, you know, and I was already advised that they do have security cameras. That was one of my concerns for the particular location, but did anyone else from the group have something that they wanted to add? Because it's a brand new facility. I think it's gorgeous. Um, anyone else? You're talking about how, uh, you know, Windsor does serve a need. There's a large community that walks directly to Windsor. Um, the Linden Spray Park is very highly accepted, very highly received. Um, you know, if you're talking about, you know, the attitude towards having a cost and versus how the city subsidizes the cost. But, and correct me if I'm wrong here, um, being, being asked to pay a little bit just to break even would be welcome, yes. especially if it meant uh, better security or better safety. Uh, you know, the, uh, there's a casting pond now at Linden, and one of the members in the room said that if they were going to put that much money into Linden, they should have just put a pool there. So I've got to be fun. Um, you know, anybody else from that group want to jump in? If no one else has anything to report at Linden, I see that Michael has his hand raised. Uh, yes, Douglas Rack. I was typing him back. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what, go ahead, Azmar. I'm sorry. Were you going to add something else to the spray park? Oh, oh no. Um, okay. The spray park is fine. We were kind of talking about when, like, kind of Windsor, because, you know, yeah. it's this, you know, for the most part, it's, kind of one community, but one set of one set of people who live closest to Windsor or Douglas Rec utilize the pool that aren't going to travel up the street to Linden Spring Park. It's it's a hardship to get from that part of this, you know, even though it's only a few miles away, it's a hardship for them to get from Douglas up to the new Linden. Uh, the, the furthest point that Windsor serves south to the northmost point of the service area of Linden Spray Park is almost 10 miles. And if you're walking in the yeah. summer, <laughs> that's hard. See, now, now y'all gonna have us talking about Coda. And that's oh, and well, a whole other can of worms. Yeah. That's a but, whole other conversation because of the way those routes work or. Yeah. So I guess I just wanted to um, summarize a general feeling I got from the comments that I think the rec department and the city need to be prepared for is that we are not talking about a couple hundred grand to rip up the bottom of Tuttle and turn it from 18 inches to zero depth. We're talking about an expectation and maybe it takes a bond issue, but a some significant expenditures in the aquatics program. Because I can tell you as somebody that attended swim lessons at the aquatic center in 1976, um, yeah, they lowered the bulkhead, and they put in a digital scoreboard. However, that was paid for by an outside entity. Mm. Um, and at Tuttle, they added a mushroom 
And that's the sum total of the improvements I have seen in almost 50 years. So I really think the city needs to be prepared to bite the bullet and catch up to the 20th century. I'll point to Ohio State in this example. Larkins Hall was state-of-the-art when it was built almost 100 years ago. And they waited so long to replace that facility or update it that they had to bite the bullet, tear it down, and build that beautiful RPAC. And I think that's the point the city is at now where it's time to bite the bullet, invest a whole lot of money, and actually catch up to the last 50 years of neglect that the aquatics program has suffered while we've been building new rec centers without pools and building Berliner Park and pointing to it as a model for the country. Um, it, it's just time to catch up. And the other point I just want to make quickly is this was addressed at the Swim Center meeting, but I just want to follow up on it. The same firm is handling this process and in the school district's facility master planning process. And apparently they plan to get those folks together from the department and the school district to talk. Um, but I'd really like to hear about some progress on that and know what's going on in that aspect, because that has not been a strength of this city in the past 50 years with partnership between the rec department and the school system. There's been you know, some high points here and there, but overall, partnerships between those two entities has been just a vacuum for half a century. We will share progress on that. The um, Columbus master plan is basically uh, just one step ahead of where we are at the moment. Um, and so right now we're going through all of the school buildings this summer uh, and assessing them for educational adequacy. And so as we move into the fall, I think we'll know a little bit more about the direction that they're going and more about the direction that we're going. And, and those talks will happen. They're on everybody's agenda. So I appreciate you asking that and pointing that out. Can I raise my hand? Hello? Hello. Hi. Don't raise your Hello. hand. We're both on the wheel. My name is Tom Jones. Um, I work for Columbus State Schools. I'm actually a coach. I'm a head football coach. I'm a teacher with the district. Um, and I've been in aquatics for about 35, so 15 years. Since I was, uh, 20 years. Since I taught him to swim. There you go. Okay, Mike, let it go. <laughs> um, anyway, so I've also ran my own facility. And um, when I look at Columbus as a whole, Windsor, Linden Spray Park, Tuttle, those are the furthest north aquatics that the Parks and Rec have. Um, and Columbus goes all the way up past 270. And I mean, we're talking Windsor to Linden Spray Park being hard to get to with a 10-mile hike. What about a 15-mile hike or a 20-mile hike? I mean, there used to be three pools in the 161 corridor right around Beechcroft and Northland. And I know Northland has been, Northland's the second oldest school in the Columbus State North. Weston's the second oldest behind North Adult that was built in the 1800s, 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, if they're going to rebuild a pool and, and, we're talking seriously about partnering up. Why can't we build a Northland school with a Northland high school or a Whetstone Centennial co combination with a pool attached, you know? And, you know, for reference, Afrocentric, which is the newest Columbus City school, cost $49.5 million. One pool that most of the pools that the Columbus Parks and Recs have been building are roughly Five point five million dollars. To put it in in perspective, Brian Day's contract was close to uh, twenty million. So we have individuals that live in Columbus that could buy both. I agree. Um, so part of what we're doing in this process is looking at areas of the city that are aquatic deserts. 
And so obviously the north side is the biggest one. Um, we're also looking at the southeast side, the southwest side. Um, and so we're, we're going to identify those areas. And in the next round of uh, public conversations that we're having, uh, we're going to identify uh, those areas and what we're looking to do there. And so um, I appreciate you bringing that up and mentioning that. Um, and that is part of the plan here. And is, is that part of the discussion, too, in looking at even whether Windsor gets renovated? Because Am I correct that there's there's railroad tracks along the east side of where Windsor is that could be a deterrent from some families, you know, sending their kids over and it's kind of, I mean, right across the street, it's just a little bit more industrial in that area as opposed to where the Linden Community Center is, which is all very, um, you know, more neighborhood. Yeah, so across from Windsor, or depending on how long you've been in the city, Douglas, because um, the rec center is right next door, there is a um, residential complex, but then there also is a, um, a plant right next door. And then, like you said, the railroad track. But I mean, it's open. It's not like you can't see or like see what's coming or really. I mean, if anything, I would say maybe well they can walk for parking but maybe parking but overall i don't really see anything too terribly wrong with the design of windsor um i just was bringing up since we were talking about pools in the questions that kind of related i didn't feel like linden really needed any improvements because it's a brand new spray park I mean, it's a be it's beautiful. I really would have wished that they would have put a pool in, but I understand since there's another pool within just a few miles. But the people that reside in the area, they're not traveling the distance to go to the other location. I, I don't think so, at least. Those that go to Windsor go to Windsor and those that go to the Spray Park go to the Spray Park. Thank you. That is what we heard in the Windsor meeting is that a lot of those folks don't want to travel to different pools. They like their pool. They like the location. Um, and so we're taking all of that into account. Does anyone have any um, last comments before we wrap up? Um, okay. I, I'm sorry I missed last week, but I was I enjoyed coming to every of the of the meetings and a couple of weeks ago with the Columbus Aquatic Sun Center and looking for for the to to more discussions, even if on Zoom or the or in person. I've even checked out the Legat website. I've seen what you've designed with different pools in Illinois and a few other places. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. It's super sure. trivial, but don't get rid of the mushroom at Tuttle. I'm just saying that's part of the tradition and the history of Tuttle, just part of swim lessons and all that. That's my, my soapbox. I wrote it down. Thank you. Do you have any idea of during this process where some decisions are going to be made about the size of the investment? I mean, because at a certain point, it's going to require more than just what the city has in the bank. It's going to require a bond issue. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we do go beyond a certain level in terms of adding more facilities and the scope of the work, do you have any feeling at all where those major financial decisions are going to be made as far as the timeline? So when we take all the information that we've gathered from these meetings, um, we're going to start looking at, you know, the responses to the polls, the responses to the survey, everything that we learned from you and what you want to see at each of these places. And so we'll start to quantify that and we'll start to look at what that's going to cost. And then that's when the decisions are going to start to be made. Um, when okay. we're looking at the facilities, when we're looking at you know, potential new indoor facilities, potential new pools, where those are going. And those conversations will be had, um, I believe, later this summer. Okay, I guess I just am thinking back to the surveys and my recollection may be a little fuzzy. I don't know that those surveys 
really collected the information about the desire for multiple new facilities across the city. I don't really know that that's going to be represented in those survey results, not because the desire isn't there, but because the survey didn't capture it. So we're, we're able to divide out uh, based on the pool that you selected, um, like what zip code you responded to and that sort of thing. So we can see where people are coming from. But we also set that two mile radius as sort of an ideal pool catchment area. And so we, we understand that people are visiting Tuttle from outside of that two mile radius. And we see that the whole north side of town has nothing else available. And so when we're looking at where to put them, it's not so much based on, you know, where people are coming from to visit the facilities, but where there are areas where there are population with no aquatic facilities. So I, I get that. I guess I just don't recall seeing the question on the survey about how many new indoor facilities should we be adding? I don't recall that question it, it or was anything not that would capture it. It was not a question. Right, which is my point, <laughs> that I think we're hearing in some of these meetings a desire for some scope that wasn't addressed in the surveys. So if we're relying on the surveys because more people answered them than showed up for the meetings, I'm a little concerned about that. Just as far as a, as a needs assessment process goes, that may not have been best practice. We're doing a full demographic analysis of the city. Uh, where the population is, where the population is growing, where facilities and services are missing. Um, and that's how we're kind of going to determine which areas need uh, new facilities. And so those are based on radiuses, population rules of thumb, and that sort of thing. And so um, as we talked about looking at Cleveland for comparisons, I mean, we're going to look at Cleveland, we're going to look at Pittsburgh, we're going to look at Cincinnati, we're going to look at Indianapolis see what everyone else is doing, and then bring those ideas to uh, what we're projecting for Columbus. And so that wasn't information really that we were looking to gather in the survey because it's covered in all the demographic analysis that we're doing. Okay, so well, that's great. Because what I just heard you say was that there are already plans in place to look at multiple new facilities as part of this plan. Sure, everything is on the table. Okay. I guess I just maybe would have included that in the surveys because somebody's got to pay for it. And the people answering those surveys are the ones that are going to have to pay for it. Sure. Sure. And I think that's really what the second round of community engagement is meant to capture. Now that you see what's possible, now that you see uh, where the potential new facilities will be, um, you know, how do you feel about the support behind these? Great. That's a little comforting to hear. Okay. I know one of your cohorts kind of uh, posted like a link where you could sign up to get progress updates. Will like down the road, like specifically to Tuttle, will um, you be like releasing like design plans and then kind of letting people get feedback? Because I know when some of the new pools have been done, they're like managers, I would hear like just kind of more making comments, like be like, well, there's this big wall that's in the middle of the view of like from the office so we can't see there's this blind spot like things like that where like from the staffing purpose like the setup was great but there were some blind spots that were like safety concerns so I'm just wondering if like it's going to be opened up so the public can kind of weigh in but also like managers and like kind of just lifeguard perspective can kind of weigh in and say this looks great on like paper, but this is not going to work for lessons yes. or yada yada. Yes, so well. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that we saw that at Driving Park the other day if, with if you have a newer kid racing backstroke and there's this little peninsula kind of thing. Well, they were knocking into that or bumping their heads on that because there wasn't a landline up, a, you know, along there. So a, a simple fix. And I think our, you know, um, yeah, the lifeguards or some instructors would have would notice that or something. And I don't know, maybe that place does have and it was broken or something. But um, I, I think it's really important for the staff who use it regularly to to have their eyes on it. Absolutely. It's a very valid concern. And that is the intent of the next round of community engagement. Um, part of the staff from CRPD that's been working on this with us is the aquatics manager and the aquatics assistant manager. And so they know the workings of those facilities. And, you know, we've been meeting when we go out onto the sites with 
the staff of each of the pools and hearing their, their concerns and their wants. Um, and so, yes, the intent is that when we come back to you in the early fall or the late summer, that we'll be sharing those concept ideas with you. So if you think no. of anything else, ask, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, to no, Noel's point, so Dodge was the first one that was redone completely. And uh, I was there with when that happened. I was manager. And there were certain things that as operational happened versus design, some things didn't like, it didn't work out like it, it, it was mentally supposed to. Part of that was just operations. And then those small little tweaks have happened as the newer pools have been made. And she's seen the improvement throughout the years by being around each one of those schools. And I'm guessing, Noel, that you would like to see those little improvements be made and continue to be improved upon. Is that a thumbs up for yes or a thumbs down for no? Yeah, I actually was thinking of Dodge and the big wall thing in the middle of like the guard house, like how it just kind of obstructed the view. So that's what I was thinking of. So you hit it. There you go. Different words. Well, if you guys think of anything after the meeting, um, you can send an email to info at columbusaquatics.org. Um, we're always uh, listening and we're always ready to hear your thoughts and concerns. Um, so if you think of anything, please let us know. Uh, just shoot us an email. Um, and again, we'll post the presentation on the website, columbusaquatics.org, and we'll have the recording available um, probably early next week, but we'll send out an email to everyone who's here um, when that's ready. And then um, the link was in the chat to sign up and get the email updates on the project. So look for those. Thank you everyone so much for being here. You know, I was glad to see you. How are the girls? They're good. They're all the girls, all both of you. Maybe, maybe some records this summer. We'll see. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. Sean, yeah. do you want me to switch to the other one? Let's see. Uh, George, can you hear me? I don't know. He's still on mute. Same with Bell. So the presentation went away. I mean, just the things we're supposed to talk about. The, yep. the last one, I think people commented on in the chat first. Why are we looking at $10 admissions? Because that's what they do in Upper Arlington and Hilliard. Um, we're not, we're yeah, not looking we're not at Upper Arlington and Hilliard in any way, shape, or form. And that's that's totally understood. And none of those options presented were were at the level of the suburban uh, pool. Uh, we just presented it as sort of a, a baseline of what the neighboring communities were doing. And I get that, and, but. I'll provide you with a little bit of history here. When the city went to charging a dollar, there were church groups out having bake sales in the street to go to the pool. And it resulted in some really, really bad press for the city. I mean, it just, it was not a good look. So, so I, I don't know who dollar, came up with these questions or who's pushed so the for the questions on this study. I'm saying when they raised it to a dollar, it was an issue. I don't know that a dollar is too much because we seem to have gotten used to that. But when they did it, there were pictures in the dispatch of six, seven, and eight-year-olds in the street with bait sales raising money to go to the pool. You know, I saw some numbers out there in the slide presentation about some other communities charging $10. That's a bridge too far, I think. We are Absolutely. not those communities. I'd like to know what Cleveland does, especially since they've got, I think, 20 indoor pools and 18 outdoor pools for like a third of the population of Columbus, or what Cincinnati or Toledo or any other large municipality is doing, because that's really who we should be looking at as our peer organizations. I mean, Columbus City Schools does not compare themselves to New Albany Schools. That would just be not useful. Thank you for those comments. I'm taking notes here. 
Okay, before we get going much farther, does anyone want to volunteer to be our reporter when we return back to the room? Anyone, all you need to do is share what we've talked about. I can report back. Thank you, was it Trisha? Yes, Trisha. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, I see that Joseph has his hand raised. Yes, uh, and I just wanna jump on the bandwagon there from the last speaker. And we all know that the city, you know, operates its aquatics at a loss. And I've never talked to a taxpayer in my life who was opposed to that loss because of the benefit it has for the children and people of, of the city of Columbus. So we have to keep the cost down to a dollar or less uh, in order for, uh, you know, to provide for the residents and the children and, every, and the youth of, of the city of Columbus. And, uh, you know, again, and if there's ways to raise corporate monies, that's that's something that uh, Rex and Parks needs to do then. And uh, apparently the foundation, I understand, kind of took a dive, uh, the Rex and Parks Foundation, but uh, there needs to be some way to, to raise money if that's needed, uh, but uh, we can't we can't raise the price. Um, I just checked Cleveland. There's their 17 and under is two dollars. So the idea that one dollar, I mean, we're ha at one dollar, we're half the price of Cleveland. I don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, it, the, the statement was we should compare ourselves to our peers. No, and I think that's fair. But I, like I said, in the presentation, there were some numbers out there that were double digits. And I think if you look around the communities that they were looking at for this comparison, but that was for, that was for were, the option of an annual pass. If somebody was going to pay um, like five dollars every day or one dollar every day, and they were going to go seven times a, a week, um, forty dollars a year would be much much cheaper. So those double digit numbers were actually to make it cheaper for people. And for high user sure people, we did buy the the family membership, um, and I I don't know I can't remember how much it, it was, but something like the forty dollars, maybe a little bit more than that for the whole summer, and yeah, maybe the rest of the year. I'm sure the people in here actually know the amounts. And if it was forty dollars and you got to use multiple pools and you got to even use the indoor pool, you're talking about it was an annual membership. So that would be for an adult eight uses and if you were going seven days a week I mean this would be like dirt dirt cheap like yeah, five cents a use. I don't disagree I was pushing right. back on this idea of kids fundraising to go to the pool and some of the members some of the fees I know they charge other communities I don't think two dollars is out of line I just think we need to put some reasonable expectations on that moving forward I, I mean, think yeah, a dollar is pretty but, reasonable you know, I, I don't disagree. I don't think ten. The question of collaboration with the school district to build pool. I, I know my. <laughs> so can I can I speak to the to that to I love the idea of collaboration with any and everyone who could support this. I think that. We don't often, I'm from Linden. I grew up in Linden. I commuted to Tuttle. I now work in Linden, which is why I had made the comment that I'm happy to go to either one. But our families, the families that I work with and how I grew up, my parents couldn't afford $40 out of one check. What they could pull together is when it was 25 cents or when it was a dime or when it even moved up to a dollar, we could make it work because of the paycheck structure, because my parents didn't have the luxury of being able to shell out that much money. I think that if we're talking about the opportunity deserts that, that the city of Columbus has on the north side and on the east side, that this financial piece, there needs to be different options. It's perfectly possible that we have options based on like, like age, uh, family income, ability to pay. This is what we're asking for. If you can't do it, we can work something out. Sponsorships from Columbus 
city school sponsorships from businesses or however, but I think that we can't, that hearing that a dollar is a dollar really too much, is $2 really too much to ask for the people we want to bring back to the pools, it can be. And especially if we're talking about Tuttle and the, and all of the children that commuted to Tuttle because it's a pool and it was a safe pool and Windsor was not a safe pool and there wasn't a Linden splash pad at the time. Like that's who we wanna be, that's the population we, we wanna be building. We, we know that Ohio State is gonna come. We know the 22 year olds are gonna come, but we want the families back too. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna make it accessible and we're gonna make it attractive. We're gonna invest. We're gonna invest in these things that are on these bullet points. But I think that we really, really, really to Barnes's point have to keep the mindset of like, who are we actually trying to attract and reattract to this pool? And when we, when we talk about the financial piece, I just want us to be cognizant that there are many, many, many deficits in financial opportunity. And those are our constituents. That was my family. That is how I grew up. But currently it's free. So most people can afford free. And second is- That wasn't necessary. You, most people can't afford free. That's not a necessary statement in this conversation. But it, but it is, our conversation it is forward. It's, it's not, we're forward. not talking about now, we're talking about as we, as we build back this program, as we reinvest in Tuttle. Okay, it's, but it, right now, if we go with status quo, it's free. What's on the table is they were mentioning a dollar. But also I want to say that under this, that the, some of you know my friends and family go for free. From my understanding, if you have a you have financial need, not, right now it's free for everybody. But uh, but prior to that, if you have financial need, we could get um, a card and we could go for free. So my understanding is it's like free, and then if you're in financial need, it's free. And so like what's on the table is it being not free for people that can afford it and we're only talking about a dollar i think we're getting caught up in the weeds here yeah. i think the message of the city is they need to be prepared to subsidize the pools to some extent the pools are not going to pay for themselves and should not be expected to we can get into the details about what's reasonable and what's not and how we accommodate folks later um, but i think we probably need to move on to make sure that we answer some of the other questions so we don't run out of time so I think the first question on the list was, what improvements would you like to see at Tuttle Pool? And I'm sure there's a long list. Bathrooms, better bathrooms. <laughs> that's that's from my 11 year old. Uh, diving, diving well, for sure. And the slides would be great. Yeah, and uh, in currently, uh, currently um, Ohio Splash, uh, the LGBT master swim team has uh, occasionally practice at Telepool and or sometimes at the at the Franklin Park pool but the indoor pool is the Columbus Aquatic Center but uh, they, they practice there have swim more swim team practice uh, air areas and and um, and also and still building a couple more indoor pools for each of the it, sides of Columbus and because uh, where have we gotten behind we, because we have only one indoor pool for the city I have to go to YMCA's or or other other pool, uh, indoor pools and and the McCorkle is still a fabulous pool, pool at the Ohio State University and they have a they have the RPAC that has uh, six lane pools along with the Splash pad in Lazy River. Joe has had his hand up for a while. Yeah. yeah, Joseph, go ahead. You're muted. There you go. Oh, you're muted again. Joseph, you're, no, muted you're still again. muted. I don't think I can unmute him. There we go. Um, I I'll go with something that um, I'd like to see is um, shade. Um, I agree with the need for indoor pools. I think we have a greater need for indoor pools, which can be used all year round, than outdoor pools with um, limited ability to use. And when you can use those, uh, we're talking about it, times of the day and, and time and months that are very bright sun with no shade. 
So I, I think um, if we're talking about, you know, you mentioned that one of your main points is health and wellness. Health and wellness is achieved by going out in the bright sun, July and August from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's not health and wellness for the community. So somehow that needs to be addressed, whether it's via shade or via um, more indoor pool options. Thank you. I think I'm muted now. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, one of the things that wasn't offered is expanding the pool. And that's been talked about a lot. And one of the reasons I bring that out as well, when you use a two mile radius, radius only for your uh, statistics, uh, statistics on who uses the pool, and then it says 10 to 20 minutes is how long it takes for people to get to the pool. I think that pretty much tells you that it's not a two mile radius as to the people that are using the pool. They're coming from a farther distance. And also with the fact that Clintonville and uh, residents, they're using the pool more. There's no pool there. And I think it needs to be expanded. You could expand into the woods, of course. We all know parking can be added along the east side uh, of that area. But uh, I really think you start. You need to start looking at expanding and expansion of the swim facility itself. Thank so, you. And to Joe's point, I mean, uh, there's, there's problems with demand on programming at that pool with people lining up hours and hours ahead of time to sign up for lessons to get spots because that pool is serving the university to Worthington. Like, right, we're talking about Tuttle and Linden Spray Park. Draw a line through those two facilities. We don't operate an aquatic facility north of that, which is almost half the city. And that absolutely has to be addressed. And I think that there's such high demand because there's such limited there's limited availability of pools, but there's also limited availability of hours and months in the year. So if you expanded the months that the outdoor pools were available, ex had more indoor pools with, you know, year round accessibility to the indoor pools with um, lessons and recreational use, maybe you wouldn't have that backlog of people wanting to get their kids in for lessons or recreational use or whatever. Part of what we're doing is looking at areas of the city that are aquatic deserts. And so I thank you for pointing that out. Uh, is there a need for that? Not yet. We're still going through the demographics, trying to figure out what, where exactly those areas are and what the ideal placement is for those. That okay. will be coming. Carrie's had her hand raised. Yeah, I was just gonna say a few things. One is having small children, it is nice to have pools that are not super so like I go back and forth between there not being a diving well to being like with three kids and two adults. And I kind of like the fact that we can bring a friend of the families with us who she is, even though she's the same age as my oldest child, she is almost as tall as I am. So she can pretty much touch everywhere in the pool. So, and she can swim well enough, but like if it was over her head, it would not be as accessible. So in some ways, the sort of like more recreational and like smaller size I like. Um, even though like my son was in swim lessons at Ohio State up until the pandemic started, they haven't started them back up. He was starting to dive. So he's like, oh, I wish I could practice diving. I was like, yeah, well, there'll be a time and a place for diving when you're a little bit older and you're a little bit stronger of a swimmer. So I kind of like that. And I don't know where the pool can expand. So I sort of wonder if, again, addressing some of those needs is, is about where is there that, that, that desert or really more of an apartheid of like pool access. And I also look at like, what are your demographics? Because looking at the two mile radius is fine. Like I'm outside the two mile radius. Um, and even when I lived in the North Campus area, I might have been outside that two mile radius, just barely, but probably closer to it. So I don't actually think going to the pool pretty regularly, like we've been going every weekend all summer, basically, plus some extra times. I don't see the demographics of that two mile radius reflected in the people that I see at the pool, really. And so I'm wondering, how are you assessing who's actually using the facility versus who is geographically close? Because to call the two mile radius users, I really wonder if that is the case because Linden is outside that two mile radius, right? And we had somebody on the call saying, I grew up in Linden, but I went to Tuttle Pool because we didn't have a pool. So I think the population 
person total is serving is probably a large part of it outside that two mile radius. So who is actually using that pool? Why are they using that pool? And how do we enhance the facilities for the people who are using it? Or do we like, so, I mean, I see the note about slides, like slides would be great, but also like there is, I like the small nature of the pool. Like it's really easy to keep track of kids. It's like, sometimes like small can be good if you have more options that are again, accessible and nearby. So like, can Tuttle be a pool for specific purposes and then have other pools that meet some of these more advanced swimming needs. Um, and also on the sort of swim lesson front, swim lessons only during the day, during the week are real hard for like school age kids, unless their parents are have a flexible work environment, their home, like that I don't find the swim lessons super accessible, like the weekend lessons for like the, uh, the preschool age kids are, but swim lessons during the day, during the week are really inaccessible for a lot of working families. So I don't know that's a facility thing, but I think it is something might be facilities related, whether that's more indoor pools or some sort of expansion of what can be offered on the weekends or in the evenings, um, or maybe the expansion is being able to offer um, some form of swim lessons like during regular recreational swim time. And and they used to. I think not having them in the evening is part of kind of the pandemic, you know, uh, restrictions. Noelle has her hand raised and she's has been in the past. She was really the swim instructor for my girls. So did you want to speak to that? Yeah, um, I know we it's, we kind of toyed, like it's been Bill's kind of like thing, trying to toy with all the different types of swim lessons. I think a lot of times it's like our swim lessons end up being packed. So it's like trying like the resources to kind of work around. Cause when we, our day, I would be there from like 10 AM to 8 PM and it would be jam packed all day. Like 10 AM to like, like 1130 would be swim team. Then 1130 to 115, 130 would be swim lessons for school age kids. And then it'd be open swim. So it's pretty much like nonstop, like you're working eight hours a day. So I don't know how the day needs to be restructured, but I mean, like the guards were working pretty much all day and you'd have to like, kind of be like, Hey, can you come and do some lessons? Cause the need is there. The need is great. But we kind of need to figure out something with structure. I think the space is a problem because I know, you know, Bill would kind of be like, well, we can fit 18 in there, even though it was really a 16 slot class because it was like, but there's two more kids we need to help. So it's like, we need more space in the pool. Um, I think the structure of Tuttle, like how it has the kind of zero entry near the mushroom and the mushroom, don't get rid of the mushroom, dear Lord, do not. It's a fixture of Tuttle. Um, but the zero entry part and then kind of going to the deeper, it's perfect setup for the structure of how some lessons are for each level. Um, I think definitely just in terms of like overall amenities, um, I know Trisha, you kind of talked about it. It's just, um, uh, just like the bathhouse, both guards and like public it, we would clean it. I mean, I'd be in there scrubbing with a broom and pine saw and everything, trying to make it look somewhat presentable, but it's just it just was gross. There needs to be a better structure for the bathhouse and more space because people are just coming and be like, it's disgusting. There's toilet paper all over the floor or just the floors look moldy, but we were cleaning them, scrubbing them. So just overall, Tuttle needs a um, little TLC because we are doing, I, as a former guard, I know we did the best that we could with everything that we had. It's just, we were doing, I think I've heard people say it, we're doing a lot with what little we have and we, we need more like we need more space and I know Kathleen mentioned in the chats um with the whole diving well things and Bill always told us and it was kind of like we weren't sure if it was a myth or not I mean like we didn't think he was lying but but we weren't really sure if we could have a diving well because of the whole like um Rooms river are closing thing. now closing soon it's okay, we can keep going. Yeah, so I don't We're all know. in the same group, so we can just continue this in the main room, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's my two cents, so, I guess. To Noel's point, the, the fact that we have the pool full, there's not room for more programming, there's more demand, just takes us back to, we need more facilities. Mm-hmm. 
All right. See everybody back in the other room. Thank you, everybody.